In this video, I'm going to continue the process of tearing down, cleaning up, and restoring an old Atari 1040 STF. The next step in the process, I wanted to get all the plastics removed so that I could get them all cleaned up and do some retro braiding on them. Uh, a couple screws hold the top and bottom cover on, uh, easy to get to. Then there's just a couple of screws that hold the bezel on here. Uh, your floppy drive may be different, but uh, I imagine they're all generally pretty easy. Next up is the mouse, and you can see here that the pads on the bottom were quite dirty, and they'll need to be addressed here in a minute. Uh, next step is to go ahead and get the mouse tore apart. A couple screws on the bottom hold the unit together. You want to gently then remove the cable, and just a couple of more screws inside, uh, holding the circuit board and the inside components together. Just uh, be gentle with it and remove that and set it aside. I opted to go ahead and just remove these pads and get them cleaned up pretty good. They were just in terrible shape. Uh, then go ahead and just finish completely disassembling the mouse. I got the buttons out of here. Uh, just break it down to as uh, all the bare components as you can. Uh, next step, I just took some warm soapy water and a, a gentle brush and just worked all over every square inch of plastic that I could get to and just give it a good cleaning get all the major grime and uh, gunk off of there. Did the same thing with all the keys of the keyboard. Just give them a good once over and good scrubbing. The next step in the process I uh, used just uh, some rubbing alcohol pads to just get as much of the rust off and any other little marks I could find on the plastic. There's lots of resources online for how to retro bright, and although I don't fully understand the chemistry of it, it's uh, definitely hydrogen peroxide. This is the product I chose. I saw this online, and uh, it's the, the method I chose to use. It's relatively simple. Uh, use uh, some personal protection equipment and basically just brush it on there, and uh, then you want to cover it up with some saran wrap. and then let it sit out for four, six, eight hours. You may have to experiment around with it. This was my first time ever doing it. As far as the keys go, I just put them in a bag and poured some of the solution in there. And uh, and then you just want to let it sit out in the sun. I just kind of worked all the keys so that they were facing the sun. And there's uh, some mouse components there that I was doing. And uh, did the same thing with the top and bottom plastics. You'll notice uh, the, the top plastic on the right, the saran wrap is all kind of bunched up and kind of got the uh, developer solution kind of glopped on there. Uh, I'll show you the results of that here in a minute, but that's not the way to do it. Anyways, once you're done and it's been sitting out there for four to six hours, and you may have to experiment with that is to gently get it all scrubbed off. and. You can kind of see my initial results because of the saran wrap was kind of bunched up there. It's uh, you can kind of see the lines, and it didn't get a full even um, treatment of it. And so, what I learned from this is be meticulous in getting a good even coat of the solution on there, and even more important, get just a good even um, spread of your saran wrap so that you're not blocking the light. But here you can see the end result of the keys and. Um, I did have to do a couple of treatments, but got it looking pretty good. I'll show you here in a bit. Next step, uh, lots of rust on all these parts. I opted to just go ahead and take a small little Dremel tool and a wire brush and just kind of worked it all off of there as best I could and wanted to make sure they were all cleaned up. But here's kind of the end result. I was able to get it looking pretty good. And I did actually go back and do some retro braiding of the cables just to be, just to be nerdy about it. So here you can see, kind of got all the components cleaned up, ready to go. Next step is to get it back assembled. So uh, put the motherboard back in the tray, and then just reassemble the uh, motherboard and tray unit back into the bottom plastic. Next up, just go ahead and put the uh, top metal shield back on and redo your twist clips followed by the power supply and power supply cable. Then you want to put in the power supply shielding and there's a couple of screws that hold that on. Next up I needed to deal with this floppy drive. At first it wasn't even powering on so I needed to tear it apart and kind of see what was going on with it. And The 
first thing that I found on this uh, floppy drive was there appears to be, it looked like soda pop had gotten all over the circuit board here, right on the chip and in all the little uh, small connections there. So just using some rubbing alcohol and a little Q-tip just uh, was pretty thorough. I had to go through it and get it all cleaned up. The second major problem I found was the upper read right head came off of the arm. It looks like it, it was glued at some point in the past, you know, from the factory obviously, but it's obviously come undone. So uh, aside from that, it looks like it's in good shape other than just it had come detached from that arm. So I'm going to just give it an attempt and pull it apart and try to re-glue it on there. I figured the worst that could happen is I need to find a replacement floppy drive or, or I'll go for a uh, floppy drive emulator. I'd prefer to have this one working or have a floppy drive just to get the full experience. So there's a better uh, view of that read right head just kind of flopping loose in there. So I just braced it all up and used a little bit of super glue and put it back in. So we'll see what we get out of it. Anyways, once uh, I had the floppy drive all kind of done back up, reattached the cables, set it back in there, put the floppy drive uh, cable cover back on, a couple screws there. Next step is to go ahead and reassemble the keyboard and uh, this is just time consuming, it's easy to do. These uh, bottom plastic pieces just go through the bottom and the uh, keys just pop on top of it and they just kind of capture each other. So you just got to go through meticulous, get them all in the right spot and Follow that up by putting the uh, pads back in. I don't know what the technical name for those is, but uh, get them all back in there. And once that's done, get the circuit board back on and put all the screws back on. And we'll go ahead and give it kind of a typing test to make sure everything feels good and make sure I didn't uh, miss any of those little black pads. Uh, just a single cable connection for that keyboard and lay it back down in. And then we'll go ahead and put the top plastic back on. And as you can kind of see from that picture there, um, that retro braiding did a pretty good job after a second treatment and doing it correctly. And then uh, just finish it up, get all the bottom screws put back in, and we'll see what we end up with. And we've got a couple pictures here. Just uh, you can kind of see the difference that that retro braiding did in the keys and the mouse. And, uh, and the main unit itself. Uh, I'm actually quite pleased with the way that turned out being the first time ever doing that. It, it works really, really well. Use gloves though. You get that on you, it'll uh, it, it cause you a little bit of pain if you're not careful. Anyways, as I mentioned earlier, I did purchase a second Atari and you can see the difference in the two there. They both looked about the same when I first got to it. So powering this back up, uh, you can see the interference and then I was getting the bombs again. And the bombs are the exception codes for the Motorola 68000 CPU. So the number of bombs kind of correspond to a specific error code. So tear it all back down again and I kind of needed to go back through and reseat uh, some of these chips again and uh, had to mess with it a number of times to get it to come back up. But I do have some distortion on the screen, some interference in the video signal. But this gave me an opportunity to test that floppy drive and although this particular format is a single-sided format, I, I was able to get a successful double-sided format on a disk. So I'm satisfied that in uh, some realm that floppy drive is functioning. And so just to make a long story short, I continued to have nothing but trouble with this particular motherboard. It more often than not was just generating bomb codes. In this picture here, you can see the two systems that I was working with. The, the two pictures on the top are the original system that I've been working on. And the two on the bottom are the, the second system that I had. Um, the, the board and the power supply from the second system were in much better condition. And in this video here, I was kind of working between the two. I was troubleshooting the chips and I was moving the toss sets between the two as well as all the other socketable chips. And what I was able to determine is that both the chips in both motherboards were all good. I was able to get them to boot. And so the problem appeared to be um, 
just inherent with this first board. I mean, it was full of rust, so obviously it's some sort of bus issue, some connection problem with one of the sockets. And so, as I mentioned earlier, I, I went ahead and I made the decision to swap these two motherboards. Um, once I finally got the, the second motherboard working, it was much more stable and didn't have any of the interference or video issues. And so, I went ahead and swapped these two out. And as simple as that, just uh, pulled one from one and moved it to the other. And on that second system, we'll, we'll decide what we're going to do with it. But um, this board here was much better. Just got that in there. And as you can see, uh, it boots right up. And no more video interference. It looks great. So I did go ahead and finish retro brighting this second one, even though it's not in a completely functional state with that motherboard in it. Um, I wanted to go ahead and practice uh, retro brighting, and as you can see, they both look great. Uh, they're maybe not new, and if you looked at them real close, you could still find some things that uh, aren't perfect about them, but uh, it really makes a ton of difference in there. So, well, that's it. The system was pretty stable at this point, and I had a tremendous amount of fun, and I'll leave you with this uh, posh demo here. Thanks for watching. them the right to judge what color is right and what color is wrong. We gave them the right to judge what nationality, whatever that is. You know, we bleed the same, we cry the same, we laugh the same. We take it back to the basics.